everyone, I'm Maria and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something not really marine related and not really marine biology related, but more PhD lifestyle related. And that is how I deal with stress related to my PhD, but just actually stress in general. If this is the first time you're seeing me, I am currently doing my PhD in marine microbiology and I am currently in the middle of my third year of a three, officially three year PhD. This means that my stress levels are starting to increase a little bit. And I will just talk to you a bit about how I deal with that. Okay, so I think I will be talking to you mainly about two things, which are the things I, that come up into my mind that I do or that I associate with decreasing my stress levels. And here we go. The first thing uh, that I really recommend and that for me especially is really important is allowing myself to have time for myself. Allow me to explain. Doing a PhD is very demanding and it very easily takes over your life because you have this, uh, this very limited time to show results and to show what you're worth or you have deadlines pressure from yourself or pressure from your supervisor all of these things can translate into you having a lot of stress all the time because there's just so much to deal with and you're just constantly thinking about that you have things to do and you have to and you feel like you have to work all the time. To me, what many times happens, sometimes more than others, obviously it depends on the amount of work I have at the time, but it becomes a bit difficult for me to allow myself to just have free time without worrying that I am not working. I personally struggle a lot with this, especially when I have a lot to do. Even if I allow myself to do stuff and to have time for myself to do with my friends, just go out for a movie or just read or whatever, Many times I feel guilty that I'm not working and this is not good for anyone. First of all, if you are doing something with someone you're not and you are constantly worried that you should actually be working, you're not enjoying the time with the person because you're constantly worried and the other person many times notices that something is wrong with you and that's not good. Well, neither for both of you as people and also not for the relationship, whichever kind of relationship that might be. Additionally, it's all not mentally healthy. Too much stress is poison. Of course, being a bit stressed is not a problem, but being constantly stressed and constantly worried about something is poison for your mind and for your body. Go read literature about it if you are interested. I will not spend a whole video not talking about that. It has been many times shown that more hours of work is not the same as more work done. The productivity of a healthy mind and a healthy body is probably double, if not triple, if not quadruple of a tired brain. This might not be a problem for everyone. I know people who have no problems in taking time off. I personally struggle with that, so let me know if you do struggle with that, then I know I'm not alone. <laughs> Take one hour to just do nothing. Just write like in your schedule, one hour of my time, of me time, and then you can just do whatever you feel like to do in that, in that time. <laughs> but I have an agenda at work and what I do every Monday when I arrive is I open my weekly part of the agenda and I make a weekly schedule. I set goals for the week and then if I need to like plan experiments and things that really need a specific time schedule, I already write in the days the times where I will do each thing. And many times in the schedule, I also schedule free time. Even if most of the times I do not have my free time when I schedule it, unless it's like a sports classes or something, I do know that I allocate this amount of hours for free time in my week and I'm not so, I don't feel so guilty in taking them. This has really tremendously helped me um, over the last months. It's also really good for organizing your mind and organizing your work. If you are struggling with this, I would recommend you try doing the schedule. Um, I was very skeptical in the beginning because I hate planning these kind of things. <laughs> I hate planning free time like this for me, but um, I started and it worked and I suggest. Um, so that's it. Following that, how you spend your free time. I will have to say, for me, really, really important to maintain my healthy mind and body is obviously exercise. I'm sure you people have heard people talking about how exercise is good for the body and for the mind and for stress, but it's true. It's because it's true. If for some reason, there are there's one week or a couple of weeks that I cannot exercise, I immediately feel a difference in my stress levels. And also, I'm not even talking about like uh, wellness related to body condition, but like 
just in terms of how I deal with not so good situations and like stress in general. And here I go again, I've talked about this a bit in my channel already, if I would have to recommend one type of exercise for someone who is dealing with stress and or anxiety, I would definitely recommend yoga and I'm gonna insert their meditation as well. Because when I do want, uh, yoga, I normally med have a part of meditation in the end. Before I've ever practiced yoga, before I had ever even tried yoga, I thought it was boring. I had never even tried it, but I, just by the looks of it, it looked like the most boring thing ever. <laughs> and, they were, and I was ignorant, okay? I admit I was ignorant. I judged something without even trying it. And then I tried it and it saved my life. And now here we are. But honestly, yoga and meditation have been my salvation in moments of great stress. If I'm having a really bad day or just a stressful day in general, the first thing I do when I arrive home is lay down my yoga mat and force myself to do at least half an hour of yoga and meditation. Instead of just laying myself on the couch and be a vegetable, which is normally what I feel like doing actually. But because I know the effect that it has on me when I, ex when I do yoga and because I generally would like to feel better, I really summon all the strength I have from somewhere to do these 30 minutes exercises. It's, it makes such a difference. After these 30 minutes, I feel so much better. I kid you not. It's not like you will feel good, you just feel better. So I, I'm not suggesting that yoga will cure all your evils all of the sudden. Obviously, that's not the case. Unfortunately, I think there is nothing like that. But it will definitely help you a lot to deal with all the accumulated tensions and stress and just deal with things that are in your mind. Overall, it gives you a better control over your thoughts. And when you're under real a lot of stress, sometimes thoughts are the worst, your worst enemy. I also want to say it's not like you're gonna go to one yoga class or one meditation class and you will suddenly feel reborn. It takes time both for your body to understand what yoga is all about and for your mind to, when you're talking about meditation, to understand what you are asking of it for you yourself to understand what the hell you want it's a it's a process and uh, just and as everyone is saying all the time the brain requires training until you can actually control it somehow i was actually reading a review paper on the impact of yoga in our brains it's basically a, a, an article where they just sum up all the re scientific research that has been done on on a topic in this case it was the, the impact of yoga on people's minds, on the, the development of the brain, and even in the perception of pain, which I thought was super interesting. I will actually link the, the review down below. If you want me to make a video explaining the science behind why yoga and meditation are so important for our mind and our brain and our body, let, let it down in the comments below. I will do it very gladly. I just don't know if you are interested in that. But nevertheless, yeah, yoga. I highly, highly recommend it. So this was it. Um, this video was all over the place and nevertheless, I hope that you could take something from it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.